Today, we become legends. In patch 9.3, Circuit is getting a completely new update called a rebalance. This isn't a rework, no abilities are changing in the core way they function, but it's more than just a few balance changes to bring someone into line. This rebalance idea is something completely new that high res haven't tried before, and so if all goes well, we might see more rebalances in the future. Perhaps for other gods similar to Sir Ket that aren't performing in the roles you expect them to. Gods like Erlang Shen that lean very heavily into their damage and main jungle despite being a warrior, stuff like that. With Sir Kate, of course, the main issue that led to this rebalance was her top tier play and support and almost non-existence in jungle despite being a damage focused assassin. Many aspects of Sir Kate's kit are being adjusted to provide more reward for building power on her while reducing base damages and increasing scaling pretty much across the board. So the question becomes, is it enough? Will this rebalance take Seke out of the support role and back into the jungle? Will she become viable in both roles? Or will she simply remain the same because her kit just kind of works in the support role despite being an assassin and that's not a bad thing? Variety in playstyles and classes across roles makes things a lot more interesting in my opinion. So let's get into some numbers here and hopefully decide whether Circuit's playstyle will drastically change and ultimately if she's stronger now than before, both in support and jungle. So firstly we have the passive, which received the most major changes. Catalyst has gone from just dealing a percentage of the target's max HP to dealing less max HP damage but adding significant physical power scaling. 70% at 2 poisons and 100% at 3 poisons. These kinds of scaling numbers are nothing to laugh at, they're basically an entire ability worth of scaling just for proccing her passive. However, is it worth it for Sir Ket in the long run to lose half of her max health damage on this to gain the scaling? So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use 250 physical power as the benchmark for a late game assassin power build. Of course, this number could vary a lot depending on the way you go with your builds, buffs and things like that, but in general, I think 250 power is a decent estimate for the purpose of this video. So since Sir Ket's passive does damage based on max HP of the enemy, the calculation gets a little more complicated than just flat numbers since every god and build will have different max HP values, much like the power scaling. For the max HP component, I'll be using 2000 health as the benchmark for a squishy in late game and 3000 health as the benchmark for a tank in late game. Obviously, these are just rough numbers, not every squishy is going to have 2000 health exactly, not every tank is going to have 3000 health exactly, but I think they're good for the purposes of demonstration. So prior to the change, Circuit deals 10% max health with 2 poisons and 20% with 3. After the changes, the max health value halves on both to 5% with 2 poisons and 10% with 3, but each gains 70% and 100% power scaling respectively. So against the squishy, we're looking at dealing 200 damage with 2 poisons and 400 with 3 poisons, this is the old damage. After the changes, she only deals 100 with 2 poisons, but gains 70% of 250 for the power scaling, totaling 275 damage. And with 3 poisons, she deals 200 plus 100% 100 of 250, so 450 damage total. In both scenarios, Circuit gains significant damage against the squishy target after the changes. But what about against tanks? Since surely losing all that percent max HP damage versus a tanky target with loads of health will tip the scales for Circuit after these changes. Well, she goes from 10% of 3,000, 300 for 2 poisons, and 20% of 3,000, 600 for 3 poisons before the rebalance. Afterwards, she deals 5% of 3,000, 150, plus 70% of 250, totaling 325 damage for her 2 poisons. And for 3 poisons, we get 10% of 3,000, 300, plus 100% scaling of 250, totaling 550 damage. So here we can see a small difference, with two poisons still dealing more damage to tanks than before the rebalance, but a full three poison combo will actually do less than before in this specific scenario. However, three out of four cases having improved damage is still an overall buff for Circuit's passive here. The reason two poisons is more damage but three poisons is less versus a tank is because 70% of the scaling comes online at two poisons and you only actually gain another 30% scaling for going to three. So overall, doing a two poisons combo without your ult has been buffed in damage significantly against basically any target beyond the most tanky there is. But the passive wasn't the only change in this rebalance, in fact all of Circuit's abilities were changed in a very similar way. Reducing flat base damage and increasing power scaling to incentivize people to stop building tanks her care and start building her like an assassin. From this data so far, it seems like going that route will be a solid damage increase over going tank now, whereas before, since the passive dealt max HP damage only, it didn't matter if you had 0 power or 5 billion power, her passive did the same damage regardless. But that is now changed and Circuit's builds will likely morph in response. 70% and 100% scaling is absolutely nothing to laugh at. 
Deathbane, Cobra's Kiss, and Ambush all got base damage nerfs and scaling increases across the board. Applying our 250 power from earlier, we can roughly evaluate the changes made and see if there'll be a damage increase or not when building full damage. Deathbane lost 15% scaling total and 60 base damage total. 15% of 250 is 37.5, so Deathbane has significantly lost damage even if you build a high power build. For reference, to make up the 60 damage lost on this ability, you need a build with 400 physical power. That's attainable in a real game, but it's difficult to get that much power, and that's just to break even on the changes. To gain any damage at all, you need to go significantly above 400 power, which is just unrealistic in most matches. Cobra's Kiss lost 100 base damage total across both shots, rough for sure, however it did gain 40% scaling, a lot more than Deathbane gained, and it turns out that 40% of 250 is exactly 100, so with an average damage base build, you can break even on this ability after the rebalance. Breaking even at 250 power means you can fairly reasonably gain damage here. However, we also have to account for the fact that you now can't just build tanky and get the same damage numbers as if you built damage. To get those big numbers, you gotta build circuit like an actual assassin. Her third ability, Ambush, lost 60 base and gained 20% scaling. That's 50 damage at 250 power, so you lose damage ever so slightly with this estimate. It's definitely within reach to break even or perhaps even gain damage on this ability, but in general, this trade isn't in circuit's favour, much like on Deathbane. Ambush also got a secondary nerf to the leap range, bringing it more in line with other leaps and the ranged basic attack range. I don't think anyone's complaining about this given Circuit's already great mobility. And finally we have Last Breath. The high true damage on this ability has been a large driver of why Circuit has been built tanky for the last however many years. This ability on release just did flat 650 true damage and had no scaling, however they added power scaling to it while reducing the damage in patch 7.1. Circuit Salt is now one of, if not the only, remaining ability that has true damage that also scales with power. Other examples just do flat true damage and that's it, for example Backer's Butcher Blaze just do 70 flat true damage and no power scaling. But I digress, Circuit's Ultimate was hit with a 100 damage nerf but a 40% scaling buff in the rebalance. You might recognise those numbers from her too and that's because at 250 power this trade is equal. However, you can easily see that going tank circuit will hurt your damage a lot more now than it did before. Last Breath also gained 35% damage mitigations to prevent circuit from being just blown up as soon as she ults now that she'll be building less tanky. Running the calculations again but with only 50 power, we get minus 53 damage on Deathbane, minus 80 damage on Cobra's Kiss, 40 per hit, minus 50 damage on Ambush, and minus 80 again on Last Breath. So as we can clearly see, Tank Circuit is going to take a hit in this patch. But the real question on everyone's mind is, will it still be viable, or even the go-to? Circuit still has all the amazing qualities that make her a solid assassin support. High CC, built-in true damage, max health damage, complete anti-heal, etc. However, she will significantly lack damage compared to a full power build after this rebalance, whereas before she only lost a little bit of damage to gain infinite tankiness. Circuit also gained a pretty big boost in damage to her 2 poison combo relative to her 3 poison combo. While 2 poisons lost 5% max health and gained 70% power scaling, 3 poisons lost 10% max health and only gained 100% power scaling. To keep it equal, you would think 2 poisons should be 50% scaling, but this change was clearly intentional to give Circuit a bit more potential for burst when her ultimate is down. So in conclusion, this rebalance is a bit of a weird one. Some abilities like Deathbane or Ambush seem to have been nerfed in damage even with a fairly damage heavy build. If you're building less power or at earlier in the game, the loss of base damage hurts even more, and the fact that the scaling on most of her abilities hasn't been increased to a level that makes up for the lost base damage makes me think she could be in a rough spot after the changes. However, the changes to her passive I think do make her a lot stronger since she can now burst people super hard with only two poisons and really focus down those squishy targets. Since max HP depends on the character, Circuit's passive would often do significantly less damage to a squishy than to a tank. Adding the power scaling means that targeting squishies now makes a lot more sense, since that scaling is affected by your own power and not your target's max health. Whereas all the other abilities that just lost base damage to gain scaling are hard to justify as buffs for Circuit, since the numbers show you need 400 power to break even on Deathbane, 250 power on Cobra's case, 300 power for Ambush, and 250 again for Last. That's an average of 300 power in your build just to break even on her moveset's damage from before the rebalance. The only thing that has me calling this not a straight up circuit nerf is the passive changes. Going from max health only to max health plus scaling can be pretty scary. Even with just two poisons, you're dealing 5% max health, plus 70% of power, plus another 100% of power for the actual basic attack. With a high damage build, that's for sure gonna hurt. So overall, I think her active abilities got nerfed across the board, with Cobra's Kiss and Last Breath being the only two that didn't really lose damage at 250 power. But the passive was overall a pretty strong buff in my opinion, and of course does help with taking Circuit out of the support role and plopping her back into the jungle. Less max health damage and true damage and more scaling somewhat forces Circuit users to build damage. 
Personally, I hope Sir Cat finds some kind of equilibrium where she can be viable as a tank and a bruiser, but also as a full damage assassin. It's interesting to have gods that perform outside the box where you wouldn't expect them to, and I hope they don't destroy Sir Ket's viability and support entirely on this pursuit of making her a better jungler. But that's it for me on the Sir Ket rebalance. Let me know if you like this kind of video. I've never really gone this in depth on, on a single god's changes before, but I felt this new rebalance idea that high res are coming out with makes a lot of sense to do a numbers based analysis on. Don't forget to drop a like before you leave, and I'll catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day, and peace out, you nerds.